Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. What? What is it that they don't know that they're doing? What is it that we don't know that we're doing? There is a tendency when facing fear, when feeling threatened, to reflexively defend ourselves against danger or what we perceive to be danger. The chief priests, the scribes and the teachers of the law are all afraid of Jesus and they're afraid of the crowd. Pilate is afraid for his own neck because he is afraid of Caesar Augustus, the man he answers to, if there's any disturbance in his rule. Herod has fear of missing out and wants Jesus to perform for him, to dance to his tune. And the crowd are afraid for the future. This man who had shown so much promise on Monday as they followed him up, waving palm branches and singing songs of nationalism, is now broken, beaten and bloodied before them. They don't want to lose her like that. They don't want to follow him. They're afraid for their future, so they vote for the man of action. The action hero named Barabbas, who was in prison precisely because he was rebelling against the forces of evil as they perceived them. And Jesus' friends are standing at a far distance because they're afraid for their own neck. So afraid that they'd run off and left him for dead the night before. As we read Luke, we learn that all of them, all in one way or another, had a hand in putting Jesus on that cross. But there's something deeper going on here. Something far more mysterious and disturbing and profound over the last two years, we've carried on like COVID-19 is the worst thing that has ever happened to the human race. And we've punished people, locked them up, jabbed them in the arm and done everything in our power to try to stop this virus in its tracks. But there's an infectious contagion that ran through Jerusalem on that day 2,000 years ago that led to the murder of an innocent man. The contagion that ran through Jerusalem on that day is the deadliest virus that has ever been experienced by the human race and it was largely unknown except through the words of the prophets that God sent and finally revealed at last in all its ugliness in the death of Jesus. It's something we've been blind to. Since Cain, the father of our civilization, rose up and murdered his brother out of fear and jealousy. <clears throat> what is this infection? What is this virus that plagues us so? It's a tendency for our desires to be misdirected. Our desires to push our, uh, when they push our buttons in terms of fear, making us afraid. And that fear so often leads to jealousy, lying, theft, adultery, and ultimately murder. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, stood under a tree and their desire was misdirected and things started to unravel from there as they quickly blamed one another for the situation and heaped scorn on each other's heads. The deadly nature of our misdirected desires and the way they inflame our fears and lead us to do all sorts of horrible things to each other quickly poisoned the next generation when Cain murdered Abel and so our civilization was founded. It's not for no reason that at the very heart of the revelation of God in the Old Testament, in the Exodus story, the bottom line of the Ten Commandments is what? 
What is the bottom line of the Ten Commandments? That's something that Jesus cherry-picked out of Leviticus for very good reasons. What is the bottom line? What is the final commandment out of the Ten? Thank you, Sally. Do not covet. Do not desire. Covet is a fancy word for desire. Do not desire anything that your neighbour has. Not their stuff, not their friends, not their hot spouse, none of it. Because that desire will lead you to jealousy, to lies, to theft, to adultery and even to murder if it runs away far enough. The chief priests, they desire to have the crowd's absolute attention the way Jesus does. The crowd's desire, uh, sorry, the chief priest's desire to have those miracles happen through them. They're jealous of Jesus. They're afraid of him because it seems like God's working through him, but it can't quite compute in their brain. And so it leads them to want to kill him. What, what started as a handful of people who were offended by him and afraid of him because he had what they wanted... That poison led out from that first episode in the synagogue in Capernaum all the way back to the capital city of Jerusalem and infected the whole of the religious order that ran the country. That infection then spills over into the Roman governor whose political life is now on the line because he's faced with a riot. That infection spills over into Herod. That infection spills over into the crowd. And then as one person, they want to kill God made flesh. A man who came only to preach forgiveness and give life. And share God's love with the human race. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. How many people have the church destroyed with the same infection flowing through their veins as the chief priests and scribes and Pharisees of that day? How many people do our politicians continue to destroy for the sake of their own neck? How many people want to be entertained on demand. How many people want to be led, not by a loser, but by the toughest person they can single out? God help us on May 22nd when we come to an election because the crowd of Australian voters is no different to the mob in Jerusalem on that day and they will make a mistake, I guarantee it. There's only one way out of this mess. There's only one way to cure the infection and it's something we need to inoculate ourselves against not once, not twice, not three times, not four times but every single week. That's why we Christians come to church and hear the good news of Jesus proclaimed from the Testaments, old and new. We look to the cross week in, week out, and we share at his table where he reminds us again and again and again that he died for us because he's an innocent man. The only way through this is to follow the gaze of the thief on the cross to follow the gaze of the Roman centurion, to follow the gaze of Joseph of Arimathea and see that Jesus is innocent, that our victims, the people we fear and hate and destroy, are innocent of the crimes that we accuse them of. The only way through, the only inoculation that we can take for this infectious plague 
that is destroying the human race is to look to Jesus. Father, forgive us, for we do not know what we are doing. 